George, I really want to know about the universe and cosmology, how the universe was formed, the vastness of what we see. And as I read and study, I find that many of the cosmologists are particle physicists, or that's the way they were trained. An understanding of, the, of not just atomic and nuclear physics, but, but, but that the, at the subatomic level and, and, and the very smallest particles and, and forces. How could an understanding of the very smallest parts of the universe help us to understand the very largest? So this is the, so the, the, the classical mythology issue of the Osiborus, the snake that's swallowing its tail, the tail being the microscopic and the head being the, the super macroscopic, the universal size. And there are two ways that I can tell you, think about it, and then we'll go into more detail. The first is the universe acts like a tremendous microscope on the physical scales. It takes these sub subatomic, that is below particle, quantum fluctuations, and stretches them through inflation and then through the subsequent expansion by a factor bigger than any microscope has ever done, taking these things smaller than, than a proton and making them bigger than a galaxy or the size of a galaxy. So there's one where you're going from microscopic scales to macroscopic scale. The other way is you go in the early universe from very high energies, and very high densities, but very high energies, so that the kind of interactions that take place are the kind of interactions the high energy particle physicists are doing or wish that they were doing, you know, so the universe did it first and even to a greater extent. And they were linked. We know that high energies and high momenta are inversely linked to the scale, right? And so that's one of the fundamental aspects. Of As you get science. smaller, the energy The energy get required to get, to get the smaller, right. get, get, get smaller. So, um, you can talk about in the early universe there being this quark gluon soup, and then because everything you, was so small, everything so tight. was so small and so tight and so energetic, and then as the universe expanded and cooled, eventually you made the protons and neutrons, and then eventually you made neutrons. You know, the neutrons and protons got together to make nuclei, and later you made atoms and molecules and galaxies and so forth. That's that's the whole unfolding of uh, of what's going on. So the particle is relevance, but when I think about it, it really comes back down to understanding the structure of space and time, and the structure of space and time is linked to what's in it. And so every now and then when I'm thinking about this, I think of all the stuff that's out here is no more than foam on the sea, right? That, it, that what we're seeing is the real sea is all that big mass of water, and there's a little bit of foam on the surface, a few waves, and they're, they look really kind of, you know, that's what we see from standing on the shore. Right. But in fact, they're just a tiny part of it. And if you ask, in the real structure of space and time, what's a particle or, or us in it? It's a tiny, tiny perturbation to the real structure of all of, of space and time, the thing that make up the universe. And this is the approach that the, the, the people who are doing experiments at accelerators and thinking about the next generation, but also the people who are jumping way up to talk about string theory, they're trying to explain both the structure of space time and where the particles come from and they're all part of the same thing, that you're just, you know, depends on which way you look at it, what they are. And this is the, the universe is the, is the window onto that, that part of science. I liked what you said to give us the two different ways of, of looking at the relationship between the ultra microscopic and the hugely macroscopic. The one being the expansion factor. And so by the universe expanding, it can take what was originally something sub-nuclear and very small in this gluon soup of, of, uh, of the early universe and expanding it dramatically. So we have to deal with the ultra-small in, in order to see when you expand that what it becomes as one way. The second way being that when you're so small in the early universe, because we know that the, if you roll the movie backwards from an expanding universe, you get down to a very tiny universe, that at that tiny size you, you have energy scales, which you have to be in the particle physics domain to be able to deal with. So that's, a, that's two different ways to be able to relate, relate the two. Right. And as the universe expands, you roll through the history of physics, right? Particle physics, nuclear right. physics, atomic physics, you know. Because the energies decrease. The energies are decreasing and more complicated structures are being put together. Right, right. And it's just different building blocks up here at different energies. So you see a, a, a beautiful uh, uh, timeline of, of, uh, of developments from the early universe to where we are now based upon this transition from the energies of particle physics as you expand the energies decreasing to the kinds of structures we have today.
Right, and that's, that's part of the beauties of the way science and physics work, is that some things happen on a very high energy scale, and then you get an order or two below that, and you have nuclear physics, and you get Different many orders happen. of magnitude below that, and you have atomic physics, and then an order of magnitude below that is molecular physics, and so on. And so you get eventually get down to condensed matter physics. You, you see the whole spectrum, and they nicely layer, and they're recapitulated in the history of the universe. Yeah, unbelievable. No, it's it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's all very beautiful. I mean, that's what I keep coming back to. Every time, the wrong word. It's every become, time it's, you see this, everything fits together so beautifully and so nicely, but that's what they're supposed to do in science. Yeah, everything is yeah. supposed to link, and no matter which way you look at it, you've got to get the same answer, but you have a whole different perspective, and it's, it's the symmetries that make it so aesthetically pleasing. I keep saying unbelievable, but, but really what, what it is, is it, because it's believable, it's so remarkable. It's not only believable, you can sort of show many of the steps must be that way. Uh, right? uh, so you, you have confidence in what you're doing. Yeah. I like what you also said, that now what we need to do is go beneath all of that and see what may be even more fundamental, the sea beneath the foam. And maybe that's the nature of space-time, which uh, 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 theoretical physicists, string theory, other theories are being used to try to discern what's the fundamental reality that lies below all of this. Right. And, you know, and those views, you're coming up with extra dimensions, right? Mm. And we may be that we're just trapped in three special dimensions at one time, and there could be several others, or maybe those others are folded up so tiny that, you know, they're practically not there in terms of everyday existence. But in terms of going to the very early universe, they have a very big factor uh, in how the universe unfolded and developed at the very beginning. And as those theoretical physicists develop their fascinating theories, they must conform that to the structure of the universe and the early universe, because that's their, that's their ultimate excel, particle accelerator. Yeah. It's kind of funny, because in some sense, you fear that all of them will neck down to that, and you won't have the power to discriminate them, right? <laughs> and there'll be too much wildness. On the other hand, we already know a bunch of things that fail. And so, you know, we're constrained, but we don't know how constrained we are, and how much more possibilities that there are. So that's part of the excitement of, of seeing what we can uncover.